Okay, I'm initializing Mathematica. Opening welcome screen. It's making a beeping sound. I can open up documentation. I can navigate to recent features. Click on Aster Position. Okay, Aster Position as Alt defines the location on the celestial sphere with azimuth as and altitude Alt in the current in the current horizontal frame at your geo position. Alt Aster Position as Alt R defines the location in celestial space with horizontal with horizon coordinates as Alt and distance R from your geo position. So. Um, if we look at this, we can go to Wikipedia and type in astronomical coordinates. So, there's this, the ecliptic, the galactic equator, and the celestial equator, and this is the vernal equinox, this is the north celestial pole. This is the North Ecliptic Pole, and this is the North Galactic Pole. Um, so, horizontal coordinates are centered at the observer. The fundamental plane is or zero degrees latitude is the horizon. The poles are the zenith and the nadir. So the nadir is straight down, the zenith is straight up. This is the astronomical horizon, this is the true horizon. Um, so here's an example of, uh, of a ship on the horizon. Um, the latitude is the elevation or altitude, the longitude is the azimuth. So you have the zenith, the altitude, the star, the azimuth from north, the observer, and the horizon. This is the celestial meridian. Um, So the horizontal coordinate system is a celestial coordinate system that uses the observer's local horizon as the fundamental plane to define two angles, altitude and azimuth. Therefore, the horizontal coordinate system is sometimes called as the AS-L system, the Alt-AS system, or the Alt-Azimuth system, among others. In an Alt-Azimuth mount of a telescope, the instrument's two axes follow altitude and azimuth. The celestial coordinate system divides the sky into two hemispheres. The upper hemisphere objects are above the horizon are visible, and the lower hemisphere objects are below the horizon cannot be seen since the Earth obstructs views of them. The great circle separating the hemispheres is called the celestial horizon, which is defined as the great circle on the celestial sphere whose plane is normal to the normal gravity I mean whose plane is normal to the local gravity vector. In practice the horizon can be defined as the plane tangent to a quiet low to a quiet liquid surface such as a pool of mercury. The pole of the upper hemisphere is called the zenith. The plane, the pole of the lower hemisphere is called the nadir. The following are two independent horizon horizontal angular coordinates. Altitude, sometimes referred to as elevation or apparent height, is the angle between the object and the observer's local horizon. For visible objects, it is an angle between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Azimuth is the angle of the object around the horizon, usually measured from true north and increasing eastward. Exceptions are, for example, east of Fitz Convention, which is where it is measured from the south and increasing westward of the Fitz Convention and the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, where it is measured from the south and increasing eastward. Um, so true north is also called geodetic north or geographic north. Uh, also called geodetic north or geographic north, is the direction along Earth's surface towards the geographic north pole or true north pole. 
Geodetic north differs from magnetic north the direction a compass points toward the magnetic north pole, and from grid north the direction northwards along the grid lines of a map projection. Geodetic true north also, uh, geodetic true north also differs very slightly from astronomical true north, typically by a few arc seconds because the local gravitational field may not point at the exact rotational axis of Earth. The direction of astronomical true north is marked in the skies by the north celestial pole. This is within about one degrees of the position of Polaris, meaning the star would appear to trace a tiny circle in the sky each sidereal day. Due to the axial precession of Earth, true north rotates in an arc with respect to the stars that takes approximately 25,000 years to complete. Around 2100 to 2103, Polaris will make its closest approach to the celestial North Pole, extrapolated from recent Earth precession. The visible star nearest the North Celestial Pole 5,000 years ago is Thuban. On maps published by the United States Geological Survey and the United States Armed Forces, True North is marked with a line terminating in a five point star. The east and west edges of the USGS topographic quadrangle maps the United States are meridians of longitude thus indicating true north, so they are not exactly parallel. Maps issued by, maps issued by the United Kingdom Ordnance, Ordn, Ordnance Survey contain a diagram showing the difference between true north, grid north, and magnetic north. At a point on the sheet, the edges of the map are likely to follow grid directions rather than true, and the map will thus be truly rectangular slash square. Okay, so, uh, what is ESO's FIT convention? This is the European Southern Observatory. Um, the European Organization for Astronomical Research in the Southern Hemisphere, commonly referred to as the European Southern Observatory, ESO, is an, intergovernment, is an intergovernmental research organization made up of 16 member states for ground-based astronomy. Created in 1962, ESO has provided astronomers with state-of-the-art research facilities and access to the southern sky. The organization employs about 730 staff members and receives annual state member contributions of approximately 162 million euros. Its observatories are located in northern Chile. ESO has built and operated some of the largest and most technologically advanced telescopes. These include the 3.6 mirror new technology telescope and early pioneer in the use of adaptive of active optics and the very large telescope VLT, which consists of four individual 8.2 mirror telescopes and four smaller auxiliary telescopes, which can all work together separately. The added comma large millimeter array observes the universe in the millimeter and submillimeter wavelength ranges and is the world's largest ground-based astronomy project to date. It was completed in March 2013 in international collaboration by Europe, represented by ESO, North America, East Asia, and Chile. Currently under construction is the extremely large telescope. It will use the 39.3 meter diameter segmented meter and become the world's largest optical reflecting telescope when it went operational in 2024. Its light gathering power will allow detailed studies of planets around other stars, the first objects in the universe, supermassive black holes, and the nature and distribution of the dark matter and dark energy which dominate the universe. ESO's observing facilities have made astronomical discoveries and produced several astronomical catalogs. Its findings include the discovery of the most distant gamma ray burst and evidence for a black hole at the center of the Milky Way. In 2004, the VLT allowed astronomers to obtain the first picture of an extra solar planet orbiting a brown dwarf 173 light years away. A high accuracy radio velocity planet searcher HARPS instrument installed on the older ESO 3.6 meter telescope led to the discovery of extra solar planets, including Gliese, Gliese 581c, one of the smallest planets seen outside the solar system. Um, okay, as of 2021, first light is planned for 2027. Uh, here's a picture of the current construction status. Um, The FITS uh, Flexible Image Transport System FITS is an open standard defining a digital file format useful for storage, transmission, and processing of data formatted as multidimensional arrays, for example, with 2D image or tables. FITS is the most commonly used digital file format in astronomy. The FITS standard was designed specifically for astronomical data and includes provisions such as describing 
photometric and spatial calibration information together with image origin metadata. The FITS format was first standardized in 1981 and has evolved gradually since then, and the most recent version 4.0 was standardized in 2016. FITS was designed with an eye, toward, with an eye towards long-term archival storage, and the maxim once FITS always FITS represents the requirement that developments to the format must be backward compatible. Image metadata is stored in a human-readable ASCII header. The information in this header is designed to calculate the byte offset of some information in the subsequent data unit to support direct access to the data cells. Each FITS file contains one or more headers containing ASCII card images that carry keyword value pairs interleaved between data blocks. The keyword da value pairs provide information such as the size, origin coordinates, binary data format, free form comments, history of the data, and anything else the creator desires. When many keywords are reserved for FITS to use, the standard allows arbitrary use of the rest of the namespace. FITS is also used to store non-image data such as spectra, photon lists, data cubes, or structured data such as multi-table databases. A FITS file may contain several extensions, and each of these may contain a data object. For example, it is possible to store x-ray and infrared exposures in the same file. So here's an example of a FITS file. Um, the current status uh, was officially approved. Hmm. A horizontal coordinate system should not be confused with a topocentric coordinate system. Horizontal coordinates define the observer's orientation but not location of the origin, while topocentric coordinates define the origin location on the Earth's surface in contrast to a geocentric celestial system. General features The horizontal coordinate system is fixed to a location on Earth, not the stars. Therefore, the altitude and azimuth of an object in the sky changes with time as the object appears to drift across the sky with Earth's rotation. In addition, since the horizontal system is defined by the observer's local horizon, the same object viewed from different locations on the Earth at the same time will have different values of altitude and azimuth. The cardinal points on the horizon have specific values of azimuth that are helpful references. Azimuth values for the cardinal directions, north 0, east 90, south 180, west 270. Horizontal coordinates are very useful to determining the rise and set times of an object in the sky. When an object's altitude is zero degrees, it is on the horizon. If, it, if at that moment its altitude is increasing, it is rising, but if its altitude is decreasing, it is setting. However, all objects on the celestial sphere are subject to diurnal motion, which always appears to be westward. What's diurnal motion? Diurnal motion is an astronomical term referring to the apparent motion of celestial objects, the sun and the stars, around the Earth, or more precisely around the two celestial poles over the course of one day. It is caused by Earth's rotation around its axis, so almost every star appears to follow a circular arc path called the diurnal circle, often depicted in star trail photography. The time for one complete rotation is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.09 seconds, one sidereal day. The first experimental demonstration of this motion was conducted by Leon Foucault. Because Earth orbits the Sun once a year, the sidereal time at any place in time will gain about 4 minutes against local civil time every 24 hours until after a year has passed, one additional sidereal day has elapsed compared to the number of solar days that have gone by. Relative Direction The relative direction of diurnal motion in the northern, sloth, in the northern celestial hemisphere are as follows. Facing north below Polaris, rightward or eastward, facing north above Polaris, leftward or westward, facing south rightward or westward. Thus, northern circumpolar stars move counterclockwise lump around Polaris, the North Star. Um, a northern observer can determine whether altitude is increasing or decreasing by instead considering the azimuth of the celestial object. If the azimuth is between 0 and 180 degrees, the object is rising. If the azimuth is between 180 degrees and 360 degrees, Southwest, nor southwest north, the object is setting. There, there are the following special cases. All directions are south when viewed from the North Pole, and all directions are north when viewed from the South Pole, so that azimuth is undefined in both locations. When viewed from either pole, a star or any object with fixed equatorial co coordinates has constant altitude and thus never rises or sets. The sun, moon, and planets can rise or set over the span of a year when viewed from the poles because their declinations are constantly changing. When viewed from the equator, objects on the celestial poles stay at fixed points perched on the horizon. Um, 
The equator is a circle of, long of latitude that divides the spheroids such as Earth into northern and southern hemispheres. On Earth, it is, it is, on Earth, it is an imaginary line located at zero degrees latitude, around 40,075 kilometers in circumference, located halfway between the north and south poles. The term can also be used for any other celestial body that is roughly spherical. In spatial 3D geometry, as applied in astronomy, the equator of a rotating spheroid such as a planet is the parallel circle of latitude at which latitude is defined to be zero degrees. It is an imaginary line of the spheroid equidistant from its poles dividing it into north, northern, and southern hemispheres. In other words, it is the intersection of the spheroid with the plane perpendicular to its axis of rotation and midway between its geographic poles. On or near the equator on Earth, noontime sunlight appears almost directly overhead, no more than about 23 degrees in the zenith every day year-round. Consequently, the equator has a rather stable daytime temperature throughout the year. On the equinoxes, approximately March 20 and September 23rd, the, the subsolar point crosses Earth's equator at a shallow angle. Sunshine, sun uh, sunlight shines perpendicular to Earth's axis of rotation, and all latitudes have a nearly 12-hour day and 12-hour night. The equator on a map of the Earth. Uh... Then there's a uh, countries and uh, territories that touch the equator, red or the prime meridian blue, which intersect at Null Island. Um, okay, so let me read about this. Uh, so, uh, astro position coordinates frame uses the given frames such as equatorial, horizon, galactic, etc., to define the orientation and meaning of the spherical coordinates cords. Astro position cords frame system represents location in celestial space given by a list of numeric cords referenced to the given frame and using the coordinate systems such as Cartesian, cylindrical, etc., uh, represents an array of celestial locations, represents the position of entity with respect to the given frame and coordinate system. Basic example, specify a location on the celestial sphere by providing its azimuth and altitude angles. Astro position quantity 6.2574, negative 10.3122 angular degrees. Okay. Um, And then it adds some more data. It adds frame, horizon, date, Monday, 16, January 2023, 22, 16, 28.234, location, 38 degrees, 24. Uh, find the current position of the large Magellan Magellanic cloud with respect to your horizontal frame. Aster position, large Magellanic cloud. Um, entity galaxy large Magellanic cloud downloading ephemeris data uh, 4.43 megabytes Altitude azimuth 157 degrees, distance 163 kilo light years, frame horizon. Rotate those coordinates to the equatorial frame oriented along Earth's equatorial plane. Aster position percent equatorial. Draw a circle around that location. Astrographics white circle percent ten. Aster range all astro reference frame equatorial astro background galactic sky.
so there's the galaxy I guess in this white circle current position of Mars in the International Celestial Reference System center at the Solar System Bari Center in Cartesian coordinates uh, what is the internet? At its 23rd General Assembly in August 1997, the International Astronomical Union decided that as of 1 January 1998, the IAU Celestial Reference System shall be the International Celestial Reference System, ICRS, in replacement of the FK-5. The consequences of this new situation for accuracy needs more stringent than 0 0.05 seconds are summarized by FISA and Mignard. By reference system, it has meant the set of prescription conventions together with the modeling required to define any time a triad of axes. The ICRS is accessible by means of coordinates of reference extragalactic radio sources of the International Celestial Reference Frame, ICRF. The ICRF complies with the conditions specified by the 1991 IAU recommendations. Its origin is located, the, is located at the Bari Center of the Solar System, the appropriate modeling of VLBI observations in the framework of general relativity. Its pole is in the direction defined by the conventional IAU models for precession and notation. Its origin of right ascensions was implicitly defined by fixing the right ascension of 3C273B to the hazard at LFK5 value transferred at J2000. The Barco star positions and proper motions and GPL solar system ephemeris are expressed in the ICRS. Um, the directions of the ICRS pole and right ascensions origin are maintained fixed relative to the quasars within plus or minus 20 micro arc within plus within plus or minus 20 micro arc seconds. Um, the International Celestial Reference Frame realizes an ideal reference system. The International Celestial reference system by precise equatorial coordinates of extragalactic radio sources observed in very long baseline interferometry VLB programs. Con uncertainties are given in the file. Uh, The International Celestial Reference System ICRS is the current standard celestial reference system adopted by the International Astronomical Union. Its origin is at the center of the solar system with axes that are intended to show no global rotation with respect to a set of distant extragalactic objects. This fixed reference system differs from previous reference systems which have been based on catalogs of fundamental stars that have been published that have published the positions of stars based on direct observations of their equatorial coordinates. Right ascension, declination, and had adopted its privileged axes to mean equating the dynamical equinox at a particular date and time. International Celestial Reference Frame ICRF is a realization of the International Celestial Reference System using reference celestial sources observed at radio wavelengths. In the context of the ICRS, a reference frame RF is the physical realization of a reference system, i.e. the reference frame is a set of numerical coordinates of the reference sources derived using the procedure spelled out by the ICRS. More specifically, the ICRF is an inertial bar centric reference frame whose axes are defined by the measured positions of extragalactic sources, mainly quasars used, observed using very baseline, very long baseline interferometry, while the Gaia CRF is an inertial bar centric reference frame defined by optically measuring positions of, Gaia, of extragalactic sources by the Gaia satellite and whose axes are rotated, are rotated to conform to the ICRF. Although general relativity implies there are no true inertial reference frames, around gravitating bodies, these reference frames are important because they do not exhibit any measurable angular rotation since the extragalactic sources used to define the ICRF and the, and the Gaia CRF are so far away. The ICRF and the Gaia CRF are now the standard reference frames used to, describe, used to define the positions of astronomical objects. Uh, so there's the third major revision. ICRF-3 is the third major revision of the ICRF and was adopted by the IAU and August 2018 to become effective 1 January 2019. The modeling incorporates the effect of the, galactose, of the galactose 
Endric acceleration of the solar system, a new feature over and above ICRF2. ICRF3 also includes measurements at three frequency bands, providing three independent and slightly different realizations of the ICRF dual frequency measurements at 8.4 GHz X band and 2.3 GHz S band for 4,000 f- 4, 500. 36 sources measurements of 824 sources at 24 GHz K band and dual frequency measurements at 32 gigabytes I mean and dual frequency measurements at 32 gigahertz K A band and 8.4 GHz X band for 678 sources of these sources 300 sources uniformly distributed on the sky identified as defining sources which fix the axes of the frame ICRF3 also increases the number of defining sources in the southern sky The International Celestial Reference System, ICRS, is the fundamental celestial reference system adopted by the International Astronomical Union uh, for high precision and positional astronomy. The ICRS, with its origin in the solar system, body center, and space fixed axis directions, is meant to represent the most appropriate coordinate system for expressing reference data on the positions and motions of celestial objects. Background The ICRS was established by a set of specifications agreed to by the International Astronomical Community from 1997 to 2006. The origin of the ICRS is at the Bari center of the solar system, and the origin and the orientation of its axes is space fixed, kin- kinematically non rotating with respect to distant objects in the universe. Other specifications include a metric tensor, a prescription for establishing and maintaining the axis directions, a list of benchmark objects with precise coordinates for each one, and standard models and algorithms that allow these coordinates to be transformed into observable quantities for any location and time. In this context, it is helpful to distinguish between a reference system and a reference frame as used in astronomy. A reference system is the complete specification of how a celestial coordinate system is to be formed. It defines the origin and fundamental planes or axes of the coordinate system. It also specifies all of the constants, models, and algorithms used to transform between observable quantities and reference data that conform to the system. A reference frame consists of a set of identifiable fiducial points in the sky, specific astronomical objects, along with their coordinates that serves as the practical realization of a reference system. For example, the fundamental plane of an astronomical reference system has conventionally been the extension of the Earth's equatorial plane at some date to infinity. The declination of a star or other object is its angular distance north or south of this plane. The right ascension of an object is its angular distance measured eastward along the equator from some defined reference point or the right ascension value is set to zero. This reference point, the origin of right ascension, is, has traditionally been the equinox, the point at which the sun and its yearly circuit of the celestial sphere, sphere crosses the equatorial plane moving from, south, moving from south to north. The sun's apparent yearly motion lies in the ecliptic, the plane of the Earth's orbit. The equinox, therefore, is a direction in space along the nodal line defined by the intersection of the ecliptic and equatorial planes. Equivalently, in the celestial sphere, their equinox is that one of the two intersections of the great circle is representing these planes. Because both of these planets are moving, the coordinate systems that they define must have a date associated with them. Such a reference system must therefore speci- must be the error for specifies the equator and equinox of some date. Of course, such a reference system is an idealization because the theories of motion of the Earth that define how the two planes move are imperfect. In fact, the very definitions of these planes are problematic for high-precision work. Even if the fundamental planes are defined without any reference to the motions of the Earth, there is no way to magically paint them on the celestial sphere at any particular time. Therefore, in practice, we use a specific reference frame, a set of fiducial objects with assigned coordinates as the practical representation of an astronomical reference system. The scheme is completely analogous to how terrestrial reference systems are established using survey control systems, geodetic reference points on the Earth's surface. Most commonly, a reference frame consists of a catalog of precise positions and motions, if measurable, of stars or extragalactic objects, as seen from the solar system Bari Center at a specific epoch, now usually J2000, which is 12 hours terrestrial time on 1 January 2000. Each object's instantaneous. Let me see this real quick here. Uh. Each object's instantaneous position expresses right ascension and declination, indicates the object's angular. A distance from the catalog's equator and origin of right ascension. A catalog's right ascension origin was formerly referred to as the catalog equinox, and now an uh, obsolete term. Any such two, any two such objects in the catalog therefore uniquely orient a spherical coordinate on the sky or reference frame. A modern astronomical astrometric catalog contains data on a large number of objects, and so the coordinate system is vastly overdetermined. The quality of the reference frame defined by a catalog depends on the extent to which the coordinates of all the possible pairs of objects approximate n squared over two serve to define the identical equator and right ascension origin within the expected random errors. Typically, every catalog contains systematic errors, that is, errors in position that are similar in direction 
a magnitude for objects that are in the same area of the sky or of the same magnitude, flux, or color spectral index. Systematic errors mean that the reference frame is warped or is effectively different for different classes of objects. Obviously, minimizing systematic errors when a catalog is constructed is as important, if not more so, than minimizing the random errors. To be useful, a reference frame must be implemented at the time of the actual observations. This requires the computation of the geocentric coordinates of the catalog objects at arbitrary dates and times. This, the accuracy with which we know that motions of the objects, unless they are assumed zero, is an essential factor in this computation. Astrometric star catalogs list proper motions, which are the projection of each star's space motion onto the celestial sphere, expresses an angular rate and right ascension declination per unit time. Because the tabulated proper motions are never perfect, even if assumed to zero, any celestial frame deteriorates with time. Moreover, systematic errors in the proper motions can produce time dependent warpings and spurious rotations in the frame. Therefore, the accuracy and consistency of the proper motions are critical to the overall quality, utility, and longevity of reference frames defined by stars. The positions of solar system objects can be also be used to define a reference frame. For each solar system body involved in ephemeris, plural ephemerides is used, which is simply a table or file of the celestial coordinates of the body as a function of time or algorithm that yields a table. A reference frame defined by the ephemerides of one or more solar system bodies is called a dynamical reference frame. Because the ephemerides used to incorporate the theories of the motion of the Earth as well as that uh, other solar system bodies, dynamical reference frames embody in a very fundamental way the moving equator and ecliptic, hence the equinox. They have therefore been used to align star catalog frames properly. The star positions were systematically adjusted on the basis of simultaneous observations of stars and planets. However, dynamical reference frames are not very practical for establishing a coordinate system for day to day astronomical observations. The ICRS does not involve a dynamical reference frame. Um, Descriptions of reference frames and reference systems often refer to three coordinate axes, which are simply the set of right-handed Cartesian axes that correspond to the usual celestial spherical coordinate system. The xy plane is the equator, the z-axis points toward the north celestial pole, and the x-axis points towards the origin of right ascension. Although in principle this allows us to specify the position of any celestial object in rectangular coordinates, the distance scale is not established at high precision beyond the solar system. When an astronomical reference system actually defines the way in which the two conventional astronomical angular coordinates of right ascension and declination overlay real observable points in the sky. Late 20th century developments. The establishment of celestial reference system is coordinate the establishment of celestial reference systems is coordinated by the International Astronomical Union, IAU. The previous astronomical reference system was based on the equator and equinox of J two thousand determined from observations of planetary motions together with the IAU nineteen seventy six system of astronomical constants and related algorithms, Kaplan nineteen eighty two. The reference frame that embodied this system for practical purposes was the fifth fundamental catalog FK five. The FK5 is a catalog of 1,535 bright stars to magnitude 7.5, supplemented by a further extension of, by, supplemented by a fainter extension of 3,117 additional stars to magnitude 9.5. The FK5 was the successor to the FK3 and FK4 catalogs, all compiled from catalogs of meridian observations taken in the visual band. Many such uh, observations, many such observations were in fact taken by eye. The formal uncertainties in the star positions of the FK5. At the time of its publication in 1988, were about 30 to 40 milli arc seconds all over most of the sky, but the errors are considerably worse when systematic trends are taken into account. Beginning in the 1970s, the most precise wide angle all sky astro astrometry is conducted not in the optical regime, but at radio wavelengths involving the techniques of, video of very long baseline interferometry, VLBI, and pulsar timing. Uncertainties of radar s radio source positions listed in all sky VLBI catalogs are not typically less than 1 milli arc second and often a factor of 10 better. Furthermore, because these radio sources are very distant extragalactic objects, mostly quasars, they're not expected to show measurable intrinsic motion. A reference frame defined by VLBI, VB, VLBI positions should be more inertial, less subject to spurious rotation than a reference frame defined by galactic objects such as stars or pulsars. The VLBI catalogs do have the disadvantage that their origin of right ascension is somewhat arbitrary. There's no real equinox in VLBI catalogs since VLBI has little sensitivity to the e Elliptic plane. The VLBI origin of right ascension has effectively been carried over from one catalog to the next. And it was originally based on the right ascension of the radio source 3C273B, measured using lunar occultations. Because of the accuracy and stability of radio reference frames since the mid-1980s, astronomical measurements of the Earth's rotation from which astronomical time is determined have depended heavily on VLBI with classical methods based on star transits phased out. Hence, the situation evolved where the definition of the fundamental astronomical reference frame, the FK5, became relevant to some of the most precise and important astrometric measurements. 
VLBI revealed in addition that the models of Earth's precession notation that were part of the old system were inadequate for modern astrometric precision. For in, ex in particular, the constant of precession, a measurement of the long-term rate of change of the orientation of the Earth's axis in space, had been overestimated by about 0.3 arc seconds per century. Moreover, the success of the European Space Agency, Hipparcos astrometric satellite, launched in 1999, promised to provide a new, very accurate set of star coordinates in the optical regime. Thus, beginning in 1988, a number of IAU working groups began considering the requirements for a new fundamental astronomical reference system. The resulting series of IAU resolutions passed in 1991, 1994, 1997, and 2000 effectively formed the specifications for the ICRS. The axes of the ICRS are defined by the adaptive, mo by the adaptive positions of a specific set of extragalactic extra objects, which are assumed to have no measurable proper motions. The ICRS Wait, what is proper motion? Let me just uh, look this up real quick. Proper motion. Proper motion is the astromet astromatic measure of is the astrometric measure of the observed changes in the apparent position in the apparent places of stars, other celestial objects in the sky as seen from the center of mass of the solar system compared to the abstract background of the more distant stars. Components for proper motion in the equatorial coordinate system of a given epoch after often J2000 are given the direction of right ascension and of declination. Their combined value is known as the total proper motion. It is dimensions of angle per time, typically arc seconds per year, milliseconds per year, mill arc seconds per year. Knowledge of the proper motion, distance, and radial velocity allows calculations of an object's motion from our star system's frame of reference and its motion from the galactic frame of reference, that is, motion in respect to the sun and by coordinate transformation, that is, in respect to the Milky Way. Um, okay, uh, the... The axes of the ICRS are defined by the adaptive positions of a specific set of extragalactic objects which are assumed to have no measurable proper motions. The ICRS objects are consistent to better than 0.1 arc second with the equator and equinox of J2000.0 defined by the dynamics of, Earth, of the Earth. Now, for the ICRS axes are meant to be regarded as fixed directions in space that have an existence independent of the dynamics of the Earth or of the particular set of objects used to define them at any given time. The promotion, maintenance, extension, and use of the ICRS are the responsibilities of IAU, Division A, Fundamental Astronomy, especially Commission A1, Astrometry, and Commission A2, Rotation of the Earth. The International Earth Rotation and Reference System Service, IRES, IERS, which was established by the IAU and the International Union of Geodesia and Geophysics, IUGG, is also involved. The IERS generates VLBI-based science products for astrometry and geodesy, and the IAU entities provide a framework within the astronomical community for international collaboration, overall guidance for the work and evaluation and endorsement of results. ICRS implementation, the defining extragalactic frame, the International Celestial Reference Frame, ICRF, or ICRF-1, is a catalog of adopted positions of 608 extragalactic radio sources observed with the VLBI, all strong greater than uh, 0 0.1 Jansky, I think. Uh, I think this is a uh, Jansky unit symbol, maybe. Yeah, okay. The Jansky is a non SA unit of spectral flux density or spectral radiance used, especially in radio astronomy. It is equivalent to 10 to the minus 26 watts per square meter per hertz. Okay, um. At S and X bands wavelengths 13 and 3.6 centimeters. Most faint, most have faint optical counterparts, typically with visual magnitudes fainter than 18, and the majority are quasars. Of these objects, 212 are defining sources that establish the orientation of the ICRS axes with origin at the solar system Bari center. Typical position uncertainties for the defining sources are of the order of 0.5 milli arc second. The orientation of the axes is defined from the ensemble to an accuracy of about 0.02 milli arc seconds. As described below, these axes correspond closely to what would conventionally be described as the equator and equinox of J2000.0. The International Earth Rotation and Reference System Service, the International Earth Rotation and Reference System Service, monitors the radio sources involved in the ICRF. This monitoring is necessary because, at some level, most of the sources are variable in both flux and structure, and the centers of emission can display various motions, which may not be. Uh, linear on the sky or constant rate. See the discussion in 
May et al. 1998, Section 8. A 2006 there is recognized that a major update of the ICRF was needed to maintain the accuracy and fixed orientation of the overall frame, and an IAU working group was established to update the list of sources and coordinates. The working group presented a revised and extended list of sources and coordinates. The new list was adopted by the IAU in 2009 as the second realization of the International Celestial Reference Frame, ICRF-2, superseding the original and defining the spatial orientation of the ICRS at S and X bands. The ICRF-2 has, 250, has 295 defining sources chosen from a solution for the positions of 3,414 sources. Only 97 of the defining sources are also defining sources in ICRF-1, reflecting the results of the ongoing analysis of, store, of source stability and the working group's goal of mitigating source position variations. The positional uncertainties have been reduced considerably, and the newest is more evenly distributed across the sky, especially in the south. Typical ICRF-2 defining source position errors position errors, all things considered, are approximately 0.1 milli arc seconds. The overall orientation of the axes is estimated to be stable within 0.01 milli arc seconds and is consistent with that of ICRF-1. ICRF the ICRF-3 was adopted by the International Astronomical Union at its XXF, XXX General Assembly 20-31 to August 2018 as a replacement to ICRF-2 as of 1 January 2019 contains positions for 4,536 extragalactic sources as measured in the SX band 8.4 GHz. Unlike previous realizations, the subset of 303 defiant sources are uniformly distributed down the sky. The SX band positions are supplemented with positions 824 source positions in the K band 24 GHz and 678 sources in the XKA band 32 GHz. A total of 600 sources have positions available at all three frequencies. The positions were determined independently at each of the frequencies to preserve the underlying astrophysical content in the positions. The frame is aligned onto the International Celestial Reference System to within the accuracy of uh, to within the accuracy of ICRF2. Individ individual source coordinates have a noise floor of 0.03 milli arc seconds. The solution for the ICRF3 shows that the solar system is subject to a galactocentric rotation of 0.00. .00 58 milli arc seconds per year. Thus, the source positions are given for epoch 2015.0, and they must be propagated for observations to other epochs, epochs to preserve the accuracy. The frame at optical wavelengths. The frame, the ICRS, is currently realized at optical wavelengths by stars in the Hipparchos catalog of uh, 118,218 stars, some as faint as visual magnitude 12. Only stars with uncomplicated and well-determined proper motions, e.g. no known binaries, are used to the ICRS realization. The subset referred to, the, uh, referred to as the Hipparchos Celestial Reference Frame HR, HCRF comprises 85% of the stars in the Hipparchos catalog. Hipparchos star coordinates and proper motions are given within the ICRS coordinate system but are listed for Epoch J1 1991.25. That is, the catalog effectively represents a snapshot of the motion of the stars through space taken on 2 April 1991. At the catalog epoch, Hipparchos uncertainties for stars brighter than ninth magnitude have median values somewhat better than one milli arc second in position and one milli arc second per year in proper motion. The overall alignment to the ICRF at that epoch is estimated to be within 0.6 milli arc second with any spurious rotations or distortions less than 0.25 milli arc seconds per year. Projected to epoch 2015, typical position errors for the brighter Hipparchos stars are approximately 25 milli arc seconds. A major reanalysis of the original Hipparchos observations resulted in a new Hipparchos catalog with substantially improved astrometric data. However, the IAU never took any action that officially replaced the original Hipparchos catalog as the basis for the HDRF. Launched at the end of 2013, the European Space Agency Gaia mission is now taking astrometric observations and the results will replace the Hipparchos data as the most accurate representation of the ICRS and the optical wavelengths. The spacecraft is in orbit at the L2.1.5 million kilometers from Earth. A series of data releases started in, started in September 2016. Gaia data will eventually be complete for 1 billion stars down to magnitude 20, and for stars brighter than magnitude 15, the estimated final accuracies are expected to be better than 25 micro arc seconds of position in parallax and 15 micro arc seconds per year in proper motion. This is an unprecedented leap in astrometric accuracy over all previous observing programs. Other representations of the ICRS are described in the section below titled Data in the ICRS. Standard Algorithms. In, at its General Assembly in 2000, the IAU defined a system of space-time coordinates for 1, the solar system, and 2, the Earth, within the framework of general relativity by specifying the form of the metric tensors for each and the four-dimensional space-time transformations between them. 
The former is called the baryocentric cluster reference frame BCRS and the latter the geocentric cluster reference frame GR GCRS. Since the IAU definitions of the BCRS and GCRS concern only relativity, they can be thought of as de defining two families of reference systems. The 2000 resolutions do not specify an absolute orientation for either, although their relative orientation is described by the transformation between them. To remedy the situation in 2006, the IAU passed a resolution, IEA 2008, that specified that the ICRS de defines the orientation of the BCRS. A simple way of understanding the connection is that uh, wait, thus the ICRS and BCRS are closely linked and the two terms are often used interchangeably. A simple way of understanding the connection is that BCRS coordinates are expressed with respect to the ICRS spatial axes and ICRS data are based on the BCRS metric. Also in 2000 and 2006, the IAU adopted new models for the computation of the Earth's instantaneous orientation within the ICRS. The new models include new algorithms for precession and notation, a new definition of the celestial pole, and two new reference points in the equatorial plane for measuring the rotational angle of the Earth around its instantaneous axis. These models are described in detail in the IERS Conventions 2010 and the USNO Circular 1979 and in the 2013 edition of the Explanatory Supplement to the Astronomical Almanac. These models are important when the instantaneous coordinates of celestial objects are to be expressed with respect to the equator and equinox of date or with respect to a local horizon-based system. Um, a collection of computer modules in Fortran and C that implement these IAE recommended algorithms for Earth orientation as the standards of fundamental astronomy SOFA library. The collection is managed by an international panel, the SOFA Reviewing Board, which works under the auspices of IAU Division A Fundamental Astronomy. The board solicits codes from the board solicits code from the astrometric and geodetic community that implements the IAE AU model. Subroutines functions are adapted to established coding standards and validated for accuracy before being added to the SOFA collection. The latest version of the U.S. Naval Observatory Vector Astrometry Software, NOVAS, available in Fortran, C, and Python, also implements the IEU models. The new Earth orientation models are, of course, relevant only to fundamental observations made from the surface of the Earth. Astrometric observations taken from space platform taken from space platforms or those that are differential in nature based on reference objects that are all within a small field are not affected by these models are not affected by these models. However, there are other effects that must be taken into account in analyzing astrometric observations, e.g. proper motion, parallax, aberration, gravitational light pending, and algorithms for these may be found in volumes 1 and 3 of the, of the Hipparchos catalog documentation, ESA 1997, and in the 2013 edition of the explanatory supplement to the Astronomical Almanac for analysis of very high observ for analysis of very high accuracy observations from space, see the development by Kleiner. Finally, IAU recommended models for the rotation of the planets, satellites, and asteroids compiled by the IAU Working Group on Cartographic Coordinates and Rotational Elements are given with respect to the ICRS Arcanel et al. 2018. Relationship to other systems. The orientation of the ICRS axes is consistent with the equator and equinox of J2000.0 represented by the FK5 within the errors of the latter. Since at J2000.0, the errors of the FK5 are significantly worse than those of Hipparchos, the ICRS can, can be considered to be a refinement of the FK system at or near that epoch. The ICRS can also be considered to be a good approximation, at least as good as the FK5, to the conventionally defined dynamical equator and equinox of J2000.0. In fact, the equator is well determined fundamentally. In fact, the equator is well determined fundamentally from the VLBI observations that are the basis for the entire ICRS, and the ICRS pole is within 20 mil arc seconds of the dynamical pole. As previously mentioned, the zero point of VLB derived right ascensions, right ascensions is arbitrary, which traditionally has been set by assigning to the right ascension of source 3C273B a value derived from lunar occultation times, the moon's ephemeris, thus providing an indirect link to the dynamical equinox. The ICRS origin of right ascension is made to be consistent with that and a group of VLBI catalogs previously used by the IERS aligned in this way. The difference between the ICRS origin of right ascension and the dynamical equinox has been independently measured by two groups that use different definitions of the equinox, but in both cases the difference was found to be less than 0.1 arc second. Because of its consistency with previous reference systems, the use of the ICRS will be transparent to any applications 
with the accuracy requirements that are not more stringent than about 0.1 arc seconds. That is, for applications of this accuracy, which is good enough, for example, for telescope pointing, the distinctions between the ICRS, FK5, and dynamical equator and equinox of J2000 points are not significant. However, as mentioned above, implementation of the latest IAU Earth orientation models, precession, precession and notation are needed to express most accurately and to avoid systematic errors in the apparent positions of celestial objects with respect to the equator and equinox of date regardless of which catalog or ephemeris is used for the source data. For a concise review of the ICRS adoption and its implications, see the paper by Fiesend and Bignar in 1998. FK5 data should not be used for current applications. The FK5 proper motions are based on the previous value for the rate of precession, and their use may cause a very small spurious rotation in the coordinate system defined by the computed star positions. Data in the ICRS. Although the ICRF3 and the HR, HCRF are currently its basic radio and optical realizations, the ICRS has been extended to fainter magnitudes and other wavelengths. An ever-increasing amount of fundamental astro uh, astronomical data is being brought within the system. Some examples, not a complete list, are the VLBA calibrator survey. VCS is a list of radio sources with positions in the ICRS to be used as calibrators for the very long baseline array and the very large array. Some of the VCS sources are part of the ICRF2. The ICRS is also being used... Uh, the ICRS is also being established at radio frequencies higher than S and X band C, for example, the reports in the ICRF 3. At optical wavelengths, the Tycho 2 catalog incorporated a reanalysis of observations from the Hipparco star mapper instrument with, with data from 144 earlier ground based star catalogs. Tycho 2 contains data on 2.5 million stars going fainter than the main Hipparcos catalog and combines the accuracy of the Hipparcos position measurements with proper motions derived from a time baseline of almost a century. Also in the optical band, the U.S. Naval Observatory CCD Astrograph Catalog, UCAC, provides ICRS-compatible positions and proper motions for 113 million stars over the entire sky as faint as red magnitude 16. Star position accuracies are similar to Hipparcos and Tycho 2 accuracies at the current epoch for the stars in common, although UCAC extends to fainter magnitudes. UCAC 4, the final GAIA pre-release, uh, I mean, the final pre gay release was distributed in 2012. UCAC 5, a reanalysis using reference star data from the first GAIA data release was impro with improved proper motions, was released in 2017. Uh, the large quasar reference frame uh, uh, LQRF is another representation of the ICRS at faint optical magnitudes. It contains the coordinates of 100,165 quasars, well distributed around the sky, accurate to around 100 milli arc seconds. The ICRS was extended to the near infrared through the 2 micron all sky survey 2 mass. This ground based program provided positions for four set, 471 million point sources, most of which are stars observed in the JH and K5 and the KS infrared bands. Now, the 2 mass catalog is a single epoch survey without proper motions. Positions are listed for J2000.0, with, with which is within the four year span of observations. Astrometric accuracy of J2000.0 is about 80 milli arc seconds and the KS magnitude ranged 9 to 14 with larger errors at both brighter and fainter magnitudes. All modern post-2000 high-precision planetary and lunar ephemerides produced by three institutions have been aligned to the ICRS, the JPL ephemerides DE series from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in the U.S., the EPM ephemerides from the Institute of Applied Astronomy IAA in Russia, the INPOP ephemerides from the Institute IMCCE in France. This means in practice that the apparent coordinates of the planets and moons Computed from any of these ephemerides for a specific time and place will be comparable to in the same coordinate system as the apparent coordinates of stars computed for the same time and place, provided that the positions and proper motions of the stars are taken from an ICRS compatible catalog and the standard algorithms described above are used for both the solar system objects and stars. For a review and comparison of the JPL, IAA, and IMCCE ephemerides, see the papers from Session 2 of the Journeys 2010 conference proceedings. The tabulations in the Astronomical Almanac are based on ICRS compatible data sources including the JPL DE430 planetary and lunar ephemerides prior to the 2015 edition DE405 LE405. The almanac is prepared using the IAU recommended algorithms for Earth orientation. Authorizing IAU recommendations. The construction and implementation of the ICRS was authorized and supported by the IAU. Resolution B2 passed by the 23rd General Assembly of the IAU in August 1997 states that from 1 January 1998, the IAU Celestial Reference System shall be the International Celestial Reference System. ICRS is specified in the 1991 IAU Resolution on Reference Frames and is defined by the International Earth, Refer Earth Rotation Service, IERS. 
The corresponding fundamental reference frame shall be the International Celestial Reference Frame, ICRF, constructed by the IAU Working Group on Reference Frames. The Hipparcos Catalog shall be the primary realization of the ICRS optical wavelengths. The IRES shall take appropriate measures in conjunction with the IAU Working Group on Reference Frames to maintain the ICRF and its ties to the reference frames and other wavelengths. The 1991 IAU Resolution on Reference Frames referred to above was revolu- uh, referred to above was the 1991 IAU resolution on reference frames referred to above was resolution A4 passed by the 21st IAU General Assembly, IAU 1992. It recommended that the space coordinate grids with the origins of the solar system Bari Center at the center of the mass of the Earth show no global rotation with respect to a set of distant extragalactic objects, and that the principal plane of the new conventional reference system be as near as possible to the mean equator of J2000, and that the origin in this principal plane be as near as possible to the dynamical equinox of J2000. It also recommended that an IAE working group establish a list of extragalactic radio sources that would be candidates for primary sources defining the new conventional reference frame. Thus, the ICRS as established in 1997 was based on specifications defined by the IAU 1991. At the subsequent IAU General Assembly in 2000, Resolution B1.2, IAU 2000 restricted the number of Hipparchos stars that would be considered as part of the optical realization of the ICRS. The relevant part of this resolution states that Resolution B2 of the XX111 ARD IAU General Assembly 1997 be amended by excluding from the optical realization of the ICRS all stars flagged C, G, O, V, and X in the Hipparchos catalog. This modified Hipparchos frame be labeled the Hipparchos Celestial Reference Frame, HCRF. Effectively, this change eliminated about 15% of the stars in the Hipparchos catalog, leaving those with well-determined linear proper motions. The flags referred to are given in Hipparchos data field H59. Resolution B1.3, B1.4, B1.5 of the 2000 General Assembly defined the Bari Center General uh, defined that Bari centric celestial reference system BCRS, the geocentric celestial reference system GCRS, the transformation between them and the time scales appropriate for each system. Resolutions B1.6, B1.7, and B1.8 of the same of the same General Assembly define the IAU 2000A precession notation model, the celestial pole points in the celestial and terrestrial equators from which the rotational oh that's a typo angle uh, that should say uh, uh, define the IAU 2000A precession notation model. The celestial pole points in the celestial and, t- and terrestrial equators from which the rotational angle of the Earth is measured and the expression for the Earth rotation angle as a function of universal time, UT1. At the IAU General Assembly in 2006, Resolution 2, IAU 2008 completed the definition of the Bari Centric Celestial Reference System BCRS with the words, For all practical applications, unless otherwise stated, the BCRS is assumed to be oriented according to the ICRS axes. So the fundamental celestial reference system is actually defined by both the BCRS, relativistic metric, and ICRS orientation. Two resolutions were adopted at the XXX General Assembly of the IAU. Resolution B1 adopted the International Terrestrial Reference System ITRS. That's the preferred GTRS for scientific and technical applications, and Resolution B2 adopted the ICRF3. The text of all IAU resolutions listed by year of the General Assembly at which they were adopted can be found at the IAU website. Extended explanations of the resolutions mentioned here, as well as formulas for their practical implementation, can be found in US can be found in USNO Circular 179, Kaplan 2005. And that's the end. There's some references.